I believe that when we meet, well done, he will say. I'm, I'm so looking forward to seeing our Savior face to face. But most of all, I want him to, to look at my life and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't want to do anything to make the Lord disappointed in me. I, I think about my, I was looking at my parents just a moment ago, thinking about them and how growing up, you, you never want to disappoint your parents. But especially your heavenly Father, I never want to disappoint him. I want to live a life where that when, when he sees me uh, come the rapture, that he says, you did all that you knew to do. And I, I want e each of us to be the same way. I want us to put all the effort in that we can. And I don't want a revival service to go by and say, I wish I'd done a little bit more. I wish I'd prayed a little bit more. I wish I'd invited somebody to church. I mean, you never know when this may be our last opportunity to come to the house of God. There, there's coming a day where we'll come to church for the last time. And uh, it, it, may be, it may, may be because of death comes in your family or, or you, may, you may die and go up to meet the Lord. It may be the rapture that takes place. But there's coming a day where we'll all go to church for the last time. And I don't want us to say that we left anything on the table. I want to say that we did all that we needed to do to see somebody get saved. I'd hate to know that somebody died and went to hell because I didn't do my part. Let's all stand tonight and let's sing this last verse. And, and think about the words. And if you... Or going that way, I want you to sing it tonight like you made it. I'm going that way. I know I shall be.
appreciate the good singing tonight in the house of God. We've asked our mom and grandma to come sing us a song. Uh, if y'all would come sing that tonight. Till we reach the land of living. We're living right now in the land of the dying, but we're headed to the land of the living, amen, where death will be no more. And uh, Brother William, that comforts me tonight to know that we're headed to a place where we'll never die. And 
we'll never grow old. And uh, I've often thought about what we'll look like when we get to heaven because age won't be a factor. I've thought about babies that go on to be with the Lord and those that live to be 100 years old and go on to be with the Lord. I mean, when you get there, I, I mean, I don't feel like there'll be any babies in heaven because time will be no more. We won't have a certain age. But uh, it's, it's a lot to think about. But most of all, we'll know that we should be fashioned like unto his glorious body. And uh, he'll give us that glorified body. And I praise the Lord for that tonight. I've got a verse of scripture I want to read on my heart before we go further in the service. Philippians chapter 3, if you turn with us there. Philippians chapter 3, very familiar chapter to uh, a Bible student. If you study your Bible much at all, this is a familiar chapter to you. And you've probably read over it several times. It's just something that's been ringing in my heart the past few moments. And I just want to mind the Lord. I don't want to uh, do anything out of habit or routine. I just want to follow the Spirit of the Lord. The direction that he's leading us this evening is to read these verses, and then after this we'll go further in the service. But verse number eight of uh, chapter three of the book of Philippians, Paul here he says, "Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ." And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I've thought about these verses here and where Paul, he said, what things were gained to me, those I counted and lost for Christ. He's just got done telling about if, if anybody trusts in the flesh, any at all, he's saying I, I'm able to trust in the flesh more, have more confidence in my flesh than you are in your flesh. He says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of, of, of Benjamin, or of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews is touching the law of Pharisee. You see, this man grew up at the feet of Gamaliel, and Gamaliel was very well learned in the law, and uh, he even reproved those that uh, were against the disciples and said, if, if, if what they're doing is not of God, it's going to come to naught. But it's of, if it's of God, you're not going to stop it anyway. And Gamaliel had enough sense, but Paul grew up at the feet of Gamaliel, and so he, he's bragging about the fact that he grew up at the feet of Gamaliel. But you've, you've got to understand as well that Paul says, what things were gained to me, those I counted and lost for Christ. He's saying, nothing of my own ability do I count really worth anything in my life. I just, he, he's saying, I, I want to count it all, uh, th he said, those I counted and lost for Christ. He said, uh, he said, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, do count them but dung that I may win Christ. You've got to think about what all Paul's went through when he's, when he's writing this in the scriptures. And his main goal in life, it seems like, is to win Christ. And you may have Christ, and, and you may be saved, but are you living in favor with God each and every day? He says, be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. So he's not concerned about his righteousness, which he has none. There's none righteous, no, not one. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. 
He's saying to be found in Him, which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. The only way you'll ever attain the righteousness of God is to put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then God imputes His righteousness unto you. And where our sin was imputed into Christ, Christ became sin for us, yet He knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. When sin is imputed in Christ and Christ dies on the cross, then He is victorious, He's resurrected, He's ascended back to heaven. Then Christ wants to save you by you putting faith in Christ. And that faith is not anything that we can conjure up on our own. Faith is the gift of God, Ephesians 2.8. But when Christ gives faith to us, and then we exercise the faith in Him, then He imputes righteousness into us. And this flesh that we have tonight, it may be imputed with righteousness, the soul is, but the flesh will die. The flesh will not make it out of this world. And when, when my heart takes its last beat and I take my last breath, you can do whatever you want to with this body. It's not going to heaven. I mean, you can put it in a casket if you want to. If you do, it'll just rot. If you can, I mean, if you want to throw it out in the ocean, you can do that. My soul will not be present any longer. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But notice what Paul says. He says, I want to win Christ. In verse 10, it's kind of like he continues on in the sentence. He says, that I may know him, not that I just know him, but the power, know the power of his resurrection. There's a lot of saved people that do not know the power of the resurrection. They're not familiar with it. And... I hope you understand what I'm saying. I know that when the Spirit comes inside of somebody and they're saved, but, but I'm talking about being in the presence of God where God manifests Himself in your presence. He says that I may know Him, not just know about Him. We sing a song, page 6 in the church hymn, I want to know more about my Lord. And you may know about the Lord, but I'm asking you, do you know Him? And if you know somebody, get this. He says, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. If you know somebody, you're going to fellowship with them pretty often. If you don't fellowship with them, you don't know them that well. But the Lord, he wants not us to know him, but he wants to know us as well. And, and he knows everything about us, but he wants us to have more of a desire to know more about him. And, and I, I want us to know him tonight. And I'd love for the Lord to just sweep through the place and, and the manifestation of the Spirit of God just dwell amongst us like a fog. Have you all ever seen the fog on top of a pond? But, I mean, it's just all over the place. And you, you think about how the Lord can dwell in the midst of His people. But Paul said, I press toward the mark, in verse 14, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I was looking on in the next chapter. He, he talks about how... Uh, in verse 11 of chapter 4, he says, I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Uh, Paul's emphasis is not on material things in this life. He understands he's at the end of his life. When he's writing in prison, he knows that he's, he has appealed before Caesar. He knows his time is limited. He, he's not got much time left. And, and he's told Timothy, he says, bring me the parchments. He says, Bring me my cloak and bring me all these things, but bring me the parchments. While I'm in this jail cell, I want to write and I want to read the Word of God. I know my time is limited. And, and this man was cold. He was found naked at times. He, was, he, he had been beaten. He had been striped by the Jews and left for dead. He had went through so many things that the, the material things in this life was not important to him. He had his eye on something far beyond this world. And, and he, said, he said that in the Scriptures. He says, you know to press toward the mark. He said, forgetting those things which are behind. He said, I'm forgetting about everything that's happened to me. I'm forgetting about everything that I've been through. And my eyes are not set just forward, but my eyes are set upward. I look, I'm, I'm like Stephen. I'm looking to where I'm headed. And, and the Bible tells us to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. 
Let me tell you tonight, you ought to look up for the Lord's redemption draweth nigh. Amen. The Lord is coming back one day, and, and, and I know that while we're down here, we want the best life possible. We want all the, the, the best things in this life, but the best thing that you'll ever have is power with God and fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you wake up every morning and you feel the fellowship with Christ, and, and that Spirit of God begins to stir up on the inside of you, I thought about what Paul said. He said, stir up by way of remembrance, that gift of God that's within thee. I mean, that gift of God can be stirred from time to time. It's like a, I mean, a, a big old a bowl of, uh, I mean, a, of water or soup, something like that. You get a spatula and stir that thing, but it, it'll stir up on the inside of you when the Lord comes by. Amen? Yeah. And when he talks to you, it's very real. And so he's saying, he's saying, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know the fellowship of his sufferings. And to me, this is just my personal opinion tonight. If you come to church on a Tuesday night, you obviously want to go to church. Amen? I mean, I hope you're not coming out, out of obligation just because the church is having revival. I hope that everybody that's here tonight is coming to get something out of this service. And I hope that you're wanting to, to deepen your walk with God. I, want, I hope that you want to, Brother William, not just get in ankle-deep water, not just get in knee-deep water or one deep water, but get in over your head and let the Spirit of God just overwhelm you. David said, my cup runs over. He didn't say, my cup's half full. He didn't say, my cup's, cup's half empty. He wasn't a pessimist, amen. He said, my cup's are running over tonight, amen. And your cup can run over. If you know the Lord, your cup can run over tonight. And, and I just tell you, when you get to know the Lord and you know more about Him and you begin to fellowship with Him, your cup will bubble up on the inside of you and it will, it will flow over the top of the rim, amen. And God will get all over you. Amen. And um, I love the Lord tonight. I'm glad I'm saved. And uh, I, I'm, it, it gets better as the days go by. As, as, you know, as older I get, it gets sweeter every morning when I wake up and understand that I'm on the winning side. I am a child of the King. And let come what may in this world that we live in. It is dark. It is, it is cold. It is wicked out there. And you can, I mean, it may not be that bad in Red Bay, Alabama. You go to New York City or Atlanta, Los Angeles, places like that, sin is rampant on every corner. And our nation has forsaken God. We've turned away from him. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not discouraged at any of that. I hate to see it happening. But I'm going to tell you, I mean, people say, aren't you scared to raise kids in today's society? Well, the, the same God that got me through society is going to get my kids through society. Amen? The, the same God that's taking care of me is going to take good care of them. And God's power has not changed. He's not gotten any weaker. We serve the same God that parted the Red Sea. And I promise you tonight, the Lord can take care of our kids. Amen. But we as a people of God, we need to be excited about church. We need to come to the house of God. And, and don't sit there like a knot on a log, but stand up and say, praise the Lord. I'm, I'm a child of the King, buddy. I'm headed in the right direction. I mean, we have nothing to frown about. And it seems like the people of God's walking around with a frown on their face all the time. We, we should be the most excited people in the entire world because we're saved by the grace of God. I'll quit tonight, Brother William. You come on and preach to us. I, I just feel like it's preaching time. And uh, you just mind the Lord tonight. I love you. May the Lord bless you as our prayer. If you're lost, our altars are open. You come and pray anytime you feel like you need to. And uh, I can't save you. And the preacher can't save you tonight, but the Lord can. And it, I mean, you've not offended me. You've not offended him. You've offended God, though, if you're a sinner. And God needs to uh, need you to come and repent. Brother William, come on if you would. We love this preacher. You listen to him while he comes. God bless, bless you, Brother William. Amen. Love you. God bless your heart. It would have been all right with me if it had just went right on. Amen. Amen. Sure good to be here. Blessing to see you that are here in the service this evening. And I pray that the Lord will touch our heart, change our lives. Let us leave here different than we were when we come. Because he made the difference. He made the difference. I'm thankful uh, for what the Lord's done for me when he saved me. I've never been the same since the Lord saved me. And uh, he put a desire in my heart for him.